Hi everyone. Welcome to my first exploration of the Tesla Plaid. A gracious owner has lent me this Plaid to do a light examination. I can't do any heavy teardowns at this time, but I, we can at least go over uh, some of the differences and new systems that are present. Let's get started. So what we find here is the pretty much the exact heat pump that was developed uh, for the Model Y and is now present in the Model 3. Um, the octo valve and manifold are the same. They've changed the physical super bottle just to a slightly different form factor. Um, and the, the cooling system has been in increased. Um, we've got two large radiators now, whereas in the Model 3Y there's one large radiator. Now there's two and in addition to the two pumps that are on the super bottle, which are very hard to see, they're behind there. Um, trust me, they're two pumps, just like on the Model Y. Um, they've added two additional pumps, one here and then one up here. So definitely a lot more cooling. Um, same air conditioning compressor. It's a R1234 YF system, um, globally uh, compatible. We've got this crossed bar beam which is made out of extruded aluminum and then they weld the end caps and conveniently it becomes the air suspension pneumatic reservoir. We've also got this new lithium iron battery or sorry, lithium ion battery. I, I don't know if it's, I think it's lithium ion and not lithium iron phosphate. Um, his designation is 6.9 amp hours, 1P4S and 99 watt hours. So this is a pretty small battery. It does appear to have some sort of integrated BMS as there's a third wire on the connector here. Um, and they've also split the VC front uh, controller into two separate modules now. There's this VC front I guess you could call it uh, right side and VC front left side. This one is where the 12 volt battery is connected and uh, the output from the DC to DC. So um, looks like it's doing the, the bulk of the 12 volt high current stuff. And then uh, the, this is probably handling all the front HVAC, the super bottle, all the valves and stepper motors on the, uh, on the octa valve block. Um, we also have a pretty large, um, not as large as was seen on the on the first, but pretty large HEPA filter here for uh, the cabin filter. I guess that's the bio filter. We've got the same, what appears to be the same iBooster and ESP3 from Bosch doing the braking system. Um, windshield washer tank is now up in front of the driver's side wheel well. The body looks about the same. The motor in the front is sporting the same inverter that's used on the Model 3Y, although this is labeled Sport. I can get you in there to see it. I'm probably not. <laughs> Try this side. Anyway, trust me, it's labeled sport, so that denotes a difference uh, from the plaid versus the long range. So my guess is the they don't do the carbon overwrap on the on the rotor, and they probably put a depopulated inverter in that has less peak power. Let's see what else do we have up here? Um, down there, hard to see is the pedestrian speaker for the pedestrian alerts. And then on the other side, we've got the horns. They're really hard to see under there. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for under the hood. Okay, um, next we'll take a look at the interior. And here we have the interior with a special emphasis on this, which is the new car computer. This incorporates the same basic autopilot system that we've seen in the 3Y and SX, which is basically the hardware 3 variant, which is on the back side of this. 
and on the front side we have an all new computer based on an AMD Ryzen design with a separate uh, video processor. So uh, we also have uh, you know three display connectors on this, whereas on you know uh, S and X we only have two, and on three Y we only have one. And curiously enough, there's a depopulated connector that's labeled passenger display, which is not used. Um, of note, the diagnostic connector is now a gigabit broad reach for Ethernet, and uh, underneath the center console where the phone charger is, if you pull that out, you'll find a CAN diagnostic connector just like the uh, Model S and X have had for a while. Um, other than that, we have the larger center display. And, uh, of course, in the back, there's a rear display. The interesting thing is this display was originally supposed to be motorized, and there is a mechanism behind the display uh, with the extension. Uh, there's like a ball screw that connected to, that's supposed to be connected to a motor worm drive. The motors aren't installed, so Tesla deleted that option, but some of the mechanism is still present. Of course, we have the, you know, new wheel, which is uh, definitely divisive. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I personally think I'd rather have a wheel, but yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, that new computer is a big step change. Also, down here uh, is a touch, a capacitive touch thing, which has uh, the shifter in case the display doesn't function um, because they've moved the shifter to the side of the LCD but in the event that that doesn't work you've still got a hard if you'll call it that shifter also has the emergency flashers other than that uh, you know they've adopted the new dashboard with the uh, invisible venting which is pretty cool um, a new sound system the a uh, new car computer has a really powerful DSP, which can be used for active noise reduction, which uh, I don't believe Tesla's implemented yet, but the hardware is there. We've got microphones, uh, at least two. There may be more around the car. There's definitely more speakers. There's extra audio amplification capability in this car computer as compared to the older one used in the uh, 3 and Y. And I'm sure there's a premium sound amplifier in the back. Let's see what else in here. I guess that's about it. Uh, you know, incremental improvements in uh, interior materials. They've definitely done a really good job on NVH. So even without the active noise reduction, this car is quieter and smoother. Um, they definitely keep improving the car. And with that, let's go underneath the car. And here we have the underside of the plaid. Incidentally, Tesla calls this palladium internally. You can see the very smooth and large bottom of the battery. It's got no ribs in the middle, very smooth. It does have a cover here for the pyro fuse, which is one of these. Big heavy duty. I'll do a tear down on one of these uh, in another video. You have the steering rack, looks like the same unit used in the 3 and the Y. We can see that uh, one of those cooling pumps there. Suspension looks very much similar to the uh, older Model S, except for obviously the newer cars have the active suspension damper. We do have a real big, heavy, double welded cover on the front of this battery, which is, I'm sure, crash mitigation or intrusion mitigation. Real heavily welded and attached. Attached to the frame node here, to the rear of the subframe in multiple places. They aren't taking any chances with intrusion in that pack. You can see the uh, oil pump and oil filter for the front drive unit. 
and up under there the heat exchanger. See the bottom of the radiators um, with two big cooling fans. These are brushless fans. There's the horns. And we have the pedestrian speaker sound emitter there. Let's take a walk to the back. And here we have the piece de resistance, the big dual motor drive unit. This thing is a beast. It's got two heavy copper high voltage cables that come out of the battery and into the inverter on each side. Three oil pumps to go with the coolers. There's one on each side of the motor that is obviously connected to the heat exchanger the other one and then we have one in the rear which is I'm sure for the gear lubrication and if I had to guess I'd say this cover contains the oil filter or screen for pickup this is uh, not just does not have a differential it's just two gear reductions so they internally have this carbon overwrapped rotor that does a gear reduction directly to the half shaft so it's symmetrical down the middle the inverters are, uh, at least externally, look identical to the ones used in the 3Y. Same casting. So I would be surprised if those weren't a carryover. SIGFET based. The subframe, all aluminum, and it looks like it's um, clamshell, so the top unbolts. The suspension links are new. Um, they're lightweight, aluminum alloy, looks like forgings. Um, we have a adjustable link that is familiar to, or similar to ones I've seen in the aftermarket. So maybe the suspension's more adjustable than previous Model S suspensions. There's the level sensor for the air suspension. A big heavy stabilizer bar across the rear. And boy is this packaged well. There is very little extra space in here. Um, yeah, I can barely get my hand. I can't get the camera up there to take pictures of the side of it. Maybe uh, at some point in the future we'll be able to drop the rear subframe and take a look at the motor. Uh, the owner who graciously allowed me to photograph this car doesn't doesn't want me taking the motor apart and I can understand that so That'll come later. I've got a GoFundMe for uh, buying one of these to do a full teardown on The link is in the description um, It looks like the only electrical connections back here are these high voltage connectors and the only cooling back here is for the motor all the rest of the battery cooling, um, data connections, and also the DC to DC converter, you know, PCS, all that's gonna be up front. You can probably get in here. It's hard to see, let me get a light. There's the front data connection and the front 12 volt connection coming out of the pack. There's the cooling coming out of the pack. I'm sure that might be for the PCS. Overall, it's a market improvement to the Model S. Uh, this car's been run a long time with incremental improvements, and uh, this is arguably the best. The quickest production car, at least in its class. Pretty phenomenal. If you have any questions about the Plaid, well, I still have it here. Um, leave them below. I'm going to have to give this back to its owner here pretty soon. So I can't keep it too much longer. If there's anything you want me to take a look at, please let me know. Other than that, uh, if you have any questions about any of the systems Tesla uses, also let me know. Take care. Have a good day.